I know a lot of you have been anxiously waiting for me to review Freddy vs. Jason, whether you saw my reviews for the Friday the 13th movies last year, or you've been requesting that I review that movie for at least five years. But I just ask you all to wait a little bit longer. Once we get this review out of the way, then we can move on to the fun stuff. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for A Nightmare on Elm Street, the 2010 remake, uh, which was produced by Platinum Dunes, the same production company that remade The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Amityville Horror, and Friday the 13th. This movie is essentially a more straightforward remake of the original Nightmare on Elm Street from Wes Craven, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And, uh... Yeah, that's really the most I could say about this movie. There really isn't a whole lot to distinguish this movie from the original 1984 film, except with one crucial detail in terms of Freddy Krueger, which in my opinion cripples the movie, but we'll get to that a little later. When I decided to review the Nightmare on Elm Street series, I knew I had to get to the remake at some point. And I gotta be honest, probably more than Freddy's Dead, this was the movie that I was not looking forward to watching, and if you saw my review for Wes Craven's New Nightmare, I already spoiled my opinions on the movie by calling it a shitty remake. And it is a shitty remake. The 2000s is often regarded as one of, if not the worst decades for horror, because most of the horror movies that came out were horror remakes. People just decided, hey, let's take this classic movie or this famous horror movie and remake it for modern audiences, and it all kicked in a high gear with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, I am aware that there were horror remakes before Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but that movie really started the trend of this decade. And even though I wasn't much of a horror fan back then, I was at least keeping track of this trend going on, where every movie was practically a remake. And I feel like this remake of Nightmare on Elm Street was the nail in the coffin for this trend. Because soon after this movie came out, remakes started dying out. Yes, there was Poltergeist, Yes, there was Child's Play, uh, but since then we've gotten more original horror movies, we've seen the rise of the Insidious franchise, the Conjuring universe, uh, we got great stuff like Happy Death Day, Get Out, It Follows, uh, so many great original horror movies, uh, and remakes just kind of were put on the back burner, and watching this movie... Uh, yeah, there's a good reason why this was the remake killer. It's not a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, but when you compare this to Friday the 13th, the intention of that movie was to take elements from some of the previous films and kind of do their own version. The 2009 remake of Friday the 13th was essentially a hybrid remake of parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. Nightmare on Elm Street only remakes the first movie, and the filmmaker's intent was to try to make it scary scarier, and like, you didn't make it scarier. You just attempted to make a slicker version of a movie that we got in the 80s, but it's done nowhere near as well in every department. Okay, you know what, to be fair, because of the advancements in technology, they are able to make some of the transitions from the real world to the dream world uh, pretty seamless. Uh, there's that sequence in the pharmacy uh, where Nancy I guess she falls asleep in the middle of the pharmacy, and there's these sudden transitions between the pharmacy and the boiler room uh, where Freddy attacks her. That's pretty creative and something that couldn't have been accomplished in the 80s. And it's got some cool gore here and there, uh, even if the very first kill of the movie is clearly a guy painting a red stripe on his neck with no actual prosthetics to make it look like a slit throat. It's really bad. And that was one of the very last shots before the title card, and I'm like, damn, that is not a good first impression. Because this entire movie makes you wonder, why did you bother to make this if you weren't going to add anything new? Or at least, anything new that would improve the movie. Jackie Earl Haley plays Freddy Krueger this time around, and 
he's just not that interesting of a Freddy Krueger. And the biggest problem has to do with the makeup work. Huh? A lot of people have criticized the look of this new Freddy Krueger in saying that he looks weird or he looks like some sort of cat, huh? like the Navi from Avatar. Huh? My biggest problem with the makeup isn't so much the way it looks, huh? it's the fact that Jackie Earl Haley seems restrained by it. When you watch all the previous Nightmare on Elm Street movies and you watch Robert England's performance as Freddy Krueger, whether he's scary or funny or failing to be funny, he can act his way out of that makeup. He delivers so many facial expressions that makes Freddy Krueger the iconic horror character that he is. It's similar to how Jim Carrey is able to work through all that makeup as the Grinch, and then when you compare him to Mike Myers in The Cat in the Hat, Mike Myers just could not do what Jim Carrey did, and Jackie Earl Haley could not do what Robert Englund did. Now it is pretty easy to blame Jackie Earl Haley for this and say that he can't act his way out of a paper bag. But if you go back to Watchmen, which he did the previous year, he acted in what was pretty much a paper bag, and he gave a great performance in that movie. So I'm gonna blame the director more than Jackie Earl Haley, because if he was the only one giving a bad performance, then you could blame it on him, but everyone else in this movie is terrible, especially Rooney Mara as Nancy. All I can say is thank God for David Fincher, because this movie came out at the end of April of 2010, The Social Network came out in October of 2010, and for the little time that she's in that movie, she's great. And since then she has proven herself to be a very capable actress, and has been nominated for an Oscar. But if you were to just watch this remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, you would not at all be convinced that she was a good actress. Nancy this time around has a different last name, and in a way she's a different character, because because Nancy is more of an art student. She's obsessed with drawing. I get what they're trying to do with this character in the sense that she's more of an artistic outcast. The only problem with that is I don't know of any art girls this shallow or this uninteresting, which is very much what Nancy is in this film. Her performance is so monotone and so bland. Even when she's supposed to be scared or trying to combat Freddy Krueger, she just does it with a level of disinterest that looks like she herself doesn't want to be in this movie. And maybe that's how Rooney Mara views this movie. This could be her Alien 3, much like how David Fincher kind of disregards Alien 3 as his first movie. I would be willing to bet that Rooney Mara disregards the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, it's just terrible all around. And I think the big thing of the movie that really cripples it is an aspect that was always hinted at in the original Nightmare on Elm Street movies. So we all know Freddy Krueger's backstory. He was a child murderer who got away from the law because of a loophole. The parents of Elm Street did not take that well, so they burned him to the ground. So he decided to seek vengeance by killing all the surviving kids in their dreams. And it was always hinted and never explicitly said that Freddy Krueger was possibly more of a monster. Huh? Well, in this movie, they flat out say, yeah, Freddy Krueger was a child molester. And I'm like, yeah, we, we didn't need to know that straightforward. I get that's an attempt to try to differentiate this movie from the original series, but you just made it worse. I mean, yeah, it was implied that Freddy Krueger raped those kids in the original series, but we didn't actually need to know that. Huh? And when that big bomb is dropped in the movie, and we get to the big scene where Freddy Krueger is about to molest Nancy in her dreams, it's just not fun. Even when the best Nightmare on Elm Street films are at their scariest, the original Dream Warriors and New Nightmare, they really never went overboard into being creepy and uncomfortable, which is what this movie does. And the ending is just bullshit as well, but then again, the ending in the original Nightmare on Elm Street was terrible too, so I guess in that sense it ultimately depends on which one would you rather prefer. Huh? Because it ends in that way where Freddy's been killed, but uh oh, he's back, kills the mom, and then cut to credits. In the remake, he pops up in a mirror and stabs the mother through the eyes and then pulls her into the mirror. It's dumb, but it also kind of goes with a lot of the other dumb shit that was in this movie. Whereas with the original Nightmare on Elm Street, when you watch that mannequin just fly through the window, it is hilarious. But at the same time, it puts a damper on what is considered to be an iconic and great horror movie. I don't know, if I had to pick one, I guess I'll stick with the original because it makes me laugh, as opposed to the ending of the remake, which makes me roll my eyes hard. 
And uh, yeah, I don't have much else to say about this. Uh, I'm not angry because the movie was just so boring that I couldn't find the urge to be angry. So I'm gonna say don't waste your money on it. Out of all the horror remakes that I've seen based off of the Titans of Terror of the 80s, this is the worst because Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the very least had Arlie Ermey. Like I said before with Friday the 13th, it was a hybrid remake of the first four movies and whether you love or hate Rob Zombie's Halloween, they at least had a stylistic difference and Rob Zombie attempted new things with those movies. I don't think they worked, but at least there was an attempt to make them different. There was no attempt at all to make this movie different and the one difference that it did make was something that was always alluded to and something that we never needed to hear flat out. So I'm glad that this movie was kind of the death of horror remakes being a constant thing because this was truly awful. And there you go, that's my review for the 2010 remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. Now in the words of Anakin Skywalker, this is where the fun begins because on Halloween night, after many years of requests and having delayed this review from last year, I am finally going to be reviewing 2003's Freddy vs. Jason. I'm going to be posting this review on Halloween night and I cannot wait. But right now I want to know what you guys think about the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching my review for the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.